Okay, going to be checking the uh, valve clearance and do any adjustments if necessary on my 2024 350 EXEF. You take the tank off, basically two uh, bolts here, two on the other side. The one that holds the uh, horn in, the screw is longer, so make note of that. Then I take this connector off. When I go to put it back on, I put some uh, dielectric grease and I've changed the clamp. So I take the hose off the tank instead of from down here um, because it's just so much easier. So you take the tank off, um, two tabs here holding the plastic on. You just push it out of the way, the four bolts on the front and your screw here, remove the tank. Um, then the first thing I do, I use the toothbrush uh, and I cleaned everywhere, especially all these cables and hoses because they were all full of dust and mud. I cleaned all around uh, as much as I could. Then I blew it out with the air and now, I'm going to take the uh, spark plug off and a breather hose that is here somewhere, I'm sure, there. There's a breather hose, spark plug. Take those off, take the cap off, and then go on from there. Okay, so the next step is you take the uh, spark plug cap off since you don't have much space under here for this whole thing to come out let me go on the other side <clears throat> be careful not to bend this too much uh, the cap too much because if you do over time it can actually break from here and you don't want that gap so I basically carefully pull it up and then once it hits that wiring harness, there's enough angle to come this way. And I just carefully keep rocking it back and forth until I uh, manage to take it off. Then the cap is held on with two bolts. And the torque for those is eight Newton meters. And then the breather hose that is held on with a clamp. Okay, so we got this far. Then you have to put the bike in top dead center. Okay, to put it to top dead center, I just put the bike in gear, in sixth gear, and move the wheel. It does move. Uh, you know, it hits a tough spot and you gently just keep turning it until these green lines match in that on that middle line and then you can go ahead take the uh, uh, this bolt out that has a washer I just took it out and it's just it's not a thick washer it's just a normal copper washer so I don't think taking the washer out and putting the bolt back in is going to lock it okay uh, this is for the 24 350 XEF when you go to do your uh, valve uh, check you don't need to lock the uh, motor unless you're going to uh, change the shims uh, the bolt that is in the top dead center, it used to come with a uh, washer thick enough that then you would take the washer out and put the bolt back in and the bolt had a rounded end that would go against the uh, crankshaft to lock it. This bolt will not do that. so. Don't think taking this washer out uh, is, is going to do it. One, look at the end. It's flat. It's not rounded like 
they want you to buy this tool now from them. Basically, it's just a longer bolt with a rounded end. And since I started doing this, I don't want to wait a week with the thing all apart for it to come in. So I found an M8 uh, long bolt. Um, the, the OEM bolt in there this measures, without the washer, measures 19 mil. From the wall of the casing to the rod actually measures uh, 23 mil. So this washer is not even one millimeter. So definitely ain't gonna do it. So I found the M8 bolt long enough um, and I use my focus. I rounded the end. Son of a bitch. I rounded the end and uh, measured from the point. That's my marking all the way up here. That measures 24 mil. Then I can just put this in and the uh, torque uh, they say eight newton meters now if you're going to do this obviously it would be better if you just bought the, the bolt from them it's like don't want to charge you 20 bucks for it <laughs> i mean i will but uh, right now i want to get this done but if you are going to do this uh, put a knot on the m8 make sure it is a uh, the correct uh knot Put it on the end so when you grind it because it's going to mess up the first threads then you can clean the threads up with the knot when you take it out it will straighten the threads okay so the uh, bolt is in there the one that i made i left the other bolt down there so i wouldn't forget uh, that's the bolt that i put in and it is at eight newton meters then i checked the intake which is the two at the back and the exhaust at the front uh, the one on the intake on the left side is tight it is within spec it is at uh, 0 0.08 and on the 24s as per uh, repair manual the uh, intake is the tolerance is between 0 0.08 millimeters to 0 0.15 0 0.15 the exhaust is from 0 0.12 to 0 0.19 okay i did uh, manage to get the uh, cam tensioner or timing chain tensioner it is a 24 mil um, i haven't taken it out fully yet i will shortly and then you come up here you have to remove eight bolts they're all the same size, doesn't matter. Now, remember, uh, when you go to put them back, you have to tighten in a crisscross fashion. And then it's a, if you wanna be really anal, it is a two-stage torquing process. First stage, five Newton meters. You do fr from this one to that one, this one, that one, crisscross. You repeat for there five newton meters five newton meters then you come back second stage is 14 newton meters that's the end torque i have removed them and then it's just a question of pulling it off now there are 10 mil sockets and use short socket and then for the one on the left side back here you're gonna need one of these guys. That's the only place I needed to use this. Obviously, first you remove, because these two bolts, the uh, uh, spark plug 
tube is covering it and to remove that you just pry it up that's all uh, and then you need 10 mil socket and one of these guys for that rear bolt and you need an extension for that one the rest we're all fine um, so now I'm going to remove that and then we go to the next stage okay uh, so I uh, took the tensioner off and I took the cams out altogether. I zip tied the chain here so it wouldn't fall in. And uh, I uh, took out the shims and measured them with a caliper, wrote them down. I've put them back in. I did one at a time so I don't get confused. So uh, all I need to do tomorrow is when I get the shims in, uh, replace them and then put everything back together, making sure everything goes back the same way it came out. Uh, you know, uh, the top dead center. Um, I did actually change the bolt that I had made because it was an Allen. And I don't like using Allens for some reason. So I found the bolt is 12 mil and I did the same. And actually I put, I measured the depth because you don't want too long a bolt because then you're putting too much force on that rod. Uh, I measured, put washers and uh, uh, tightened it to eight Newton meters. Um, took all that stuff off, measured my shims. I uh, checked the cams are good, no, no markings, no telltale signs of it uh, going to shit. And uh, this is my, oops. The only one that I really would need to change is the uh, intake on the left side because it is at the tightest it's still within tolerance but it is at the at its tightest 0 0.08 mm, the other ones are okay they are within spec they are kind of halfway that one uh, the uh, exhaust again are good these are the shim sizes, the old shim sizes, 2.14, 2.14 on the intake. The exhaust changed to 2.10 and 2.07. So I want to put it at its uh, loosest because it's only going to get tighter. It's not going to get looser. So uh, that way it gives me uh, more time before I need to uh, get back in here. This is all within 2,000 miles, uh, mostly ridden on uh, trails. Uh, so it uh, gives you a rough idea. Uh, the uh, service manual for this bike says it should be done at 1,800 miles. And this is 2,000 miles. Um, so I'm gonna, it doesn't come in 2.07. I think it goes uh, 2 mil, uh, 2.04, 2.08, 2.12. So this one I'm going to put a 2.08 in and that would give me 0 0.14 uh, clearance, which is right there towards the loosest. This one I will change it to a 2.12 because then it will put me uh, right at 0 0.15. Um, actually, that is more like 13, so I just have to take two mil. Yep, two, 2.12 new shim, and this is my target. Uh, and then for the exhaust, they were at 0 0.152. Since I have it apart, I'm going to change the shim. There is no 2.06, so 
next one will be 2.08 so instead of putting me right at 19 it will put me at 17 so 0 0.02 uh, uh, I don't know if it's worth the hassle or not but I'm gonna do that this one I'm not gonna do anything because 0 0.178 is really uh, 0 0.18 and there's no way I can that doesn't make uh, I'm gonna leave that one so these three I will change and then when you go to put your uh, oops, timing chain tensioner uh, you're supposed to let's see which way do I have it yeah if I was to let's see I don't know if you can see this. Trying to do things with one hand is difficult. Okay, so I press, and as you can see, it's fully extended. You don't want to put it in like this. You want to put pressure on it. because you don't want it to go all the way uh, to the bottom. Uh, this from the bottom of the piston to top here is supposed to be three mil. Um, so you can measure it with a caliper or they say, you know, put a couple of washers uh, between two and 2.5 mil. And then, and then you put this so the washers will stop it from going all the way to the bottom. Now, obviously, it's best to do this on something that doesn't give. And then once it's at that uh, three mil distance, once you put it in and you put your cap, this one with the Allen, you will loosen it and take it out. Put a uh, screwdriver. I would put an Allen key, the biggest Allen key you can find that would fit in there. Um, so once this is in, the cap is on without this end Allen. You take this off. Put a long uh, uh, Allen in there and press it. And what it will do basically is what I just did here. When you press on the Allen, it will extend it. Obviously, this you will do last thing once you put the chain on and everything, tighten it. Then you will do this. Um, huh. Um, and it will only extend to a to the point that it needs to to keep the chain uh, in tension. And uh, and that's it. I think the only mistake you can make is not putting everything back uh, in top dead center. So make sure those green markings are on the pointing on the inside of the gears and it is on the middle line um, the middle line being being here this guy once once you put everything back in you will see that middle line and then I suppose to be certain when you take uh, that bolt out the TDC bolt out you should be able to see the marking on the rod so if you can see that marking and those two green uh, markings are on uh, are opposing one another on the line uh, then you are all good and then as far as you torque everything correctly and don't drop anything in there you should be good to go i would be extra careful when you're putting the shims in because obviously you can't use the magnet 
or can you? Hmm. I, when I was trying, I couldn't because if you use the magnet, it's going to get stuck to the magnet. And then I wonder if you can just move the magnet along a little bit and with your other finger, keep your finger on top of the uh, shim and just slide the magnet off. I wonder if you can. I didn't try that. I just put a dab of grease on my finger so the shim would stick to my finger and put it in the hole and carefully moved my finger sideways with the other finger on top of the shim because there is in the bucket you know there is a hole the shim sits in so just make sure it is not lopsided or anything make sure it's flat in the bucket and then basically you reverse everything that you did uh, you don't need to empty the oil or anything. No oil comes out of that uh, um, TDC bolt. No oil comes out of the uh, tensioner bolt. So you don't need to change your oil. And that's it. Hope it helps. Any questions, give me a holler.